welcome to the No Excuses Ladies episode number 10. Can you believe it's already episode number 10? Every Wednesday we are meeting here on Facebook and on Zoom. And just the other day as I was thinking about it, the, 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 the plan, the topic that I should have for this meeting, I thought to myself, you know, so many of you actually, hi Chas, so many of you actually are accepting the invitation. So many of you know me, but then there's so many people that I don't even know. You don't know me. You don't know who I am. What is this group all about? Hello, why are you supposed to be even joining this group, right? So let me re rewind a little bit and let's start from the beginning. Uh, I am the Empire Builder and a very successful, um, a successful, we run a very successful company, obviously, P Physique Training. We built a seven-figure uh, business uh, based on our really hard work and implementation of certain steps, right? The no excuses mindset is supposed to be, uh, oh, okay, I see, Aliana, thank you. The no, the, we're going to fix that. Uh, the no excuses mindset what's what we've been really talking about since the beginning of big physique right and as we as we continue building uh the gym and continue really being successful as as a as a coach as an entrepreneur i figured you know there is such a, a need especially in these chaotic times is this crazy times for having a badass attitude and when i came to this really like recognition and like it hit me in my head was during these chaotic times. As I was coaching and still guiding through people and trying to pick up their mindset, I've realized that we need that. We need, uh, we need, hello Ita, we need people. And if I have that ability to give it to someone, if I can share with you something that will help you to go through the process, why not to do this and create a, a page when you can actually correlate, find something useful, find something that will build you up and lead you towards success. So I figured, okay, no excuses, ladies. It's going to be all about staying fit, strong, healthy as a foundation of our life. Why are you going to succeed in business and in life? Because we've done it. I've done it myself, not even knowing how far I've gotten. And I can share with you these points. I can share with you these steps so you can get this knowledge and apply for your everyday life, right? But in order for us to change, we need to get the application. And I think this is the hardest for all of us. So think like this. Even... We're going to have a badass people coming here, badass women, entrepreneur who maybe achieved even more than me. And this is okay because I can learn from them. We're going to have people, we're going to have ladies that will be joining this group that are not feeling as successful. Maybe they, they feel down on themselves. Maybe they feel not confident enough. Maybe they want to change so much in their life, but they, they have that urge, that courage to become a no excuses, to become a badass because I think that no excuses overall, it's really a badass, being a badass. And you can be. You can be a loving, caring, at the same badass. Really, that's what it is. That's how I see it. I would love to hear from you. What do you think the badass can be? Like, what do you think about yourself as being a badass? Are you a badass already or are you not there? Do you want to be badass? Do you want to have no excuses? You know why? Why I thought about this so strong, no excuses? And I'm going to share this story with you today that if you continuously say no excuses, I'm just going to do this no matter what, no matter how hard it is, you, your life will change drastically. Your life will change tremendously. And today I will share with you something that probably sometimes maybe not, I'm never even, I never even shared. That's what I figured in order for me. To create a trust if you don't know me who I am how on earth can I really impact you and change anything if you don't know me you don't trust me you don't know who I am so if I'm gonna open up with you if I'm gonna tell you the truth as it was 
as it happened with my life, I'm assuming that it, it's going to open up something to you. And I would love for you to share. And I hope that you're going to share with you either on Zoom. I know that Ita is with me on Zoom. What I like when you girls come on Zoom is because my goal here is to build the Zoom just enough so I can see your face, so you can ask me questions, so you can um, really really say something that really you want to speak because lives are great but i feel sometimes like it's that screen that i keep on talking and then eventually i get hot i get my hot flash and i gotta raise my hair like this and this is the truth <laughs> that's how it is you know me you know though for those of you who know me that's how it is i'm i'm very transparent i think i'm very real how it is you, you this is me this is not something uh, you know, pre-recorded stuff. This is how it really happens. So let me start from the beginning. Exactly what the topic is today. I figure I have my notes. As you know me, I babble a lot. I talk a lot and I need to have and I need to be on point. I need to just kind of look at my notes and make sure that I'm not going to go too far, too much. So I thought action, actions moves us to mastery, right? It's like being real. It's like moves you to the next, in the next level. Being so real about what you want in life, it's going to move you to the next level. So the topic today, I thought, if I'm going to share, if I'm going to be so transparent with you, it's going to click something in you that maybe you've not been doing. Maybe you've been living totally someone else's life. Maybe you've been totally lying to yourself, not in a way like bed lying, just kind of wrapping it up in, in, in some something that it's not real. All right. So let's start from the very beginning. I was born in Poland in 1976. Some people think, oh, you don't look 40. How old are you? 44? I forget. 45? I really forget. When you turn 30, I think you lost it. You lose the time. You know, especially if you look in the mirror, it looks so good. <laughs> am I looking good? I hope I look good. So I always forget how old I am. I always have to think, how old am I? So uh, I was born in Poland. I was born to uh, a beautiful family. I had a, be a beautiful grandparents who are still alive. I was, uh, I did not have a, a full family as mother and father. My, my father left my mom when I, when she was in a hospital with me. Uh, I believe that she ended up in a hospital at seven or eight months into pregnancy. He left her. Uh, this was his second marriage, second child that he left behind. First child was left too, but I'm going to get into this. Uh, met my father one time in my life, and this affected my whole childhood, my whole, I think, perception of men, of how I should be, what I should want from life. I know that if you are out there who've been raised by single mom, I'm sure that somehow, if you're going to really tune into it, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. And you're going to go into a little bit deeper things into this. So it was communistic country. If you don't know about communism, I hope you will never experience this because the shelves were empty. There was, we would go to the store and pay with literally a piece of paper that would say a pair of shoes on it or a piece of butter on it to buy something from the store. The tanks were driving on the streets. A, a police hour was raised. That was the beginning of my early childhood, okay? I did not have toys. I had a one toy that um, and some little smaller plushy toys, but I had a dog named Maurice and I had a hamster. The hamster was riding on top of the dog's back, and maybe that's why he died early at age two. But supposedly hamsters don't live that long. But you know, you become creative, right? When you don't have toys, you play with your kids outside. You go outside in the park, you become very creative, right? So I was damn creative. I did not have a lot of friends. I always was kind of comparing myself to others. I always was living in like, I want something more. Maybe because we didn't have much, but I had so much of the loving family. I had loving family. I had loving grandparents. I want you to, as I tell the story, I want you to think about your life. I want you to think about, because it's going to lead us somewhere. I want you to think how 
your family was, what the family gave you. My family gave me so much love, a lot of love. But the factor of the father was always missing, right? However, early age, early age, I was living with my grandparents. So my grandfather was trying, I believe, to replace the father figure. He taught me all the sports. He encouraged me always to work out. And as I remember right now, I, I always go back to this uh, moment when, uh, when I would hear the whistle from the kettle being cooking and my father my grandfather was making his breakfast and in between him slicing the bread putting on a plate putting the, the you know the, the delicious sandwiches that he would make out of the uh, you know white cottage cheese and some radishes some red peppers very healthy always he would go and make sets and do workouts pull-ups push-ups body weight we didn't have gyms guys the gym didn't even exist like I was four years old. There was no such a thing as gym. Thank you, Eliana. It's it's like it's blown my mind what you can, what happens within forty years of our life. I wish my grandfather would be so ahead of the time and say, you know what, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, right, created a gym. Like that would have been just amazing, but he was just doing these sets in between creating and 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 and, and making these awesome sandwiches. In my some, I believe in subconscious mind that was developing that love for movement and for working out. But I did not know any better. I was very young, but that's how I was raised. He was closing the door each time he would work out. There was no. It was very strict love, but it was very. A, a very a very rich and very uh, on point that's how my grandfather always work very organized till so, till this day he writes every single day he writes he journals he journals he journals in the morning in the afternoon in the evening he you can find his blood pressure and whatever he was eating for the years i don't know for from 50 years ago that's how thorough he is this is just beyond anything but yet with all this what i'm telling you the the the, the, the man being so um clear about everything in his life he didn't create a great success other than raising his two daughters which is my mom and his uh, and my aunt uh, having a beautiful family my grandma who was always you know carrying me around singing me teaching me how to cook I, I I was always the one to, taking care of my mom the moment that we left the house. So in age 12, when we moved to my our new house, our new apartment, and I'm telling you this story just to give you something eventually so you can understand. So bear with me. I felt a broken heart. If you know what I'm talking about, moving from one place to the next, when you have your friends, I had two, I, actually one, and you're moving not that far, but that connection to your grandparents, it's like you feel like you lost something, but I didn't lose anything. They were there, but it's just like a broken heart. I had to go to see them every single day. I had to go to see them every single day. Eventually, this, this I found new friends and I became more fulfilled as I found my way around. I was bullied at, at school. Let me tell you this way. I had bullies, crazy bullies. Um, I had uh, ears that were sticking out like this as age, let me think how old I was, uh, probably 12, 13. I had a plastic surgery based on being bullied. I went, I asked my mom to uh, fix my ears because I was so fed up with them running around by me and calling me names I was crying and can you imagine that's what happens like I catch it's just bizarre right nowadays like you hear these stories that kids it's, it's, it's just all around so so now I know when somebody says it was being bullied it driven me to have my ears put together and I didn't feel my ears for six months straight actually a year the surgery was so crazy that if I tell you that I was lying on the table the doctor stick the needle in my freaking neck and put the um, 
you know, local anesthesia. I feel it back today. I hear the tearing of the skin. Have you ever heard this? Have you ever heard a skin? So imagine tearing of the skin. And then you, I feel the blood dripping on my neck. And I'm thinking, is that like a butcher side? And I'm going to come out alive from this thing or I'm just going to die. You know, you will hear these crazy things in the stories. My mom was outside of that room. This whole surgery took a, an hour. Okay, so look how the life is happening. It's just crazy. Let me tell you, the father is not a lot, is not around. Okay, the father shows up as H8 promised me that comes to my communion, never shows up and never shows up again. At age probably 16, he shows up again with my sister, who I did not know that was my sister, by his side, by his side in my house. My mom opened the door, they hear they were there. I thought that this was his new girlfriend, and that was my sister. All right, so imagine sitting at the table, like today, I'm looking, and I'm hearing, and I'm seeing them, and I'm trying to imagine, like, he has a young girlfriend. She's like a few years older than me. Not knowing this is my sister. Like this is bizarre. This is just crazy. Crazy stuff going on. But this is not the end. This is just me being, you know, living my life. And I know that crazy stuff was happening in real life. I know this. But let me bounce a little bit to the side. So my mom, all these years... Because she got so hurt, never find anybody. I truly in my heart believe that one day she will find someone. And I wish she did. Because all of us on this planet, we shouldn't be up really by ourselves, right? We should trust one another. We should develop the love and we should trust love another person, right? Things happen in love, obviously, but she didn't find anybody. And this led her, I think, to certain things, not maybe on almost on subconscious mind, creating this thing that I should not trust or maybe I should be careful. And all these things, I think it led me at some point to decide that if I am not going to make certain decisions in my life, I might end up like her and I didn't want her. I didn't want that. So I want you to find out where you are in your life. Some of you are watching me, you guys have your families, but maybe if you are young or you're watching this video and you see certain things in your life with your family, with people that love you, people might love you guys so much, but sometimes they might harm you more than the love. They might love you, but they don't understand that on this subconscious level, they create something in the air that it's being like a seed in your brain. And that's what I think was in me. So I started thinking like building a wall that I don't want the same. I don't want the same. I want different. I'm my own thing. So I found an escape. The escape was the fitness. I was escaping hours at a time. If I tell you that I would leave the house at three, I would come back at 10. That's what it was. It was going and crazy workouts and coming and that led me to anorexia and all these other things. And I believe that that was because of the broken feelings because anorexia, that's what it is. It's like from the, the nervous system breaks down and you have, uh, you're finding all these things that, uh, you know, it's not working in your life. So when you look into deep, it was, it was, it was really a mess. So from one thing to the next, jumping into one thing to the next. So it wasn't easy, but it was overall a beautiful childhood of creation and building my own little life, right? But then 90210 comes alive on a freaking uh, color TV, which all these years we had just a black and white TV. But as I will tell you this, we're going to be going actually to the point that I'm going to be start giving you the big point. So you're going to understand my story. 90210 comes around and I start watching that show once a week. And I'm like, there was one show on TV that we had. And, and I'm like, God, what a life. What a life these people had. What a different life they have. Why we cannot have this life. I want that life. I want something different. I, w I want these, 
these colors that everything would I would see like in colors there. So what I did, I was so impacted by the show. I always laugh about it because it's I think it's funny. Like the 90210 has some impact on you. That I put a map of America and I put Sacramento on it. I create an email with the same name, Sacramento spelled by K, not C. And I'm like, I'm going to go there one day. I am going to do everything to go there one day. So back in the day, I was dating a, a young friend from, I remember my university, I was studying physical education because of course, of course, the, the, the obsession about being fit, physically fit, led me to actually pass the test, train at, um, at, at high school, teaching the classes. And my teacher told me, you got to go to the physical education program. This is what you meant for. You love this. So go for it. So obviously I went and uh, I met, uh, we were dating at this time and we supposed to go. We supposed to fly to America to his like relatives and work there over the summer. Well, we broke up. We stopped dating. The whole thing fall apart, right? So here we go. Here we are I, again. I'm starting from scratch. But my urge, my goal, now write this down because this is big, guys. My goal of going to America was so big, so bizarre, that if I would have gone there, my whole life would have changed like 100 times. And that's what I want you to have. I want you to have a goal that is so big so big that you can't like it's almost hard for you to imagine but i have to tell you this urge this need to go was so big that i, I sometimes i think how a person can create from such a small town no, well not small uh, lords i was born in lords uh, this is not a small town it's an industrial city right in the center of poland but such a simple person like me from a broken family, only loving grandparents, that had a one doll, did not have much, create such a big vision in my small head. Look where I am. I'm here. I learned the language. I got on the plane, and I will tell you why. From the vision that was on on the wall behind me, above my above my bed. So your goal has to be so big that when you close your eyes, you imagine yourself there. You have to imagine whatever the goal must be. And you're going to get there. I promise you. I am a walking example of The Secret. Have you ever read the book The Secret? When I've read it, I'm like, hold on, hold on, wait a second. What vision board? What vision board are they talking about? I had a vision board. I did not know about it. I had no clue. At that point, I was just studying English. English, not American. This is the difference. And I'm going to tell you in a second. You have to have those big goals. Yes, my mom loves that book. Yes, it's a great book. For those of you who are looking some inspiration, read The Secret. A lot of people say it's just a, it's just a bullshit. No, it's not. No, it's not. You ask the universe for great things and they will come to you. I ask for this group. I feel in my blood that this is going to be big. I know it's going to be big. I'm going to make it big because I love you once, every single one of you, because I believe that women have that power of achieving amazing things, united instead of going against each other, going together. I know this. And I want to inspire you that you can do it whatever your mind designed. But this goal has to be so connected to you. Cannot be someone else's goal. Cannot be, it just has to come from the heart. Has to come from so within that it's almost so real like you live in a dream. That's how it has to be. Remember this. So, Obviously, I didn't get there and I want to get to the step when I'm going to show you how I got there. So I was at my university 
And I was thinking, how on earth I am going to get to America if my source is broken? You know, we stop dating. So, but we always ask ourselves, how? And the how never comes. It's like, how? How am I going to do this? It's like, how on the earth are you going to build something if you don't know how? It's just so complicated, right? Don't we? Like, you're gonna, you want something, but then you're like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? So replace the how maybe with who. And that's what I did. I was like, wait a second. Wait a second. What am I going to do? And look how things happen. So I was working at this time on the promotions making money working very hard studying full-time and working on the weekends 13 14 hours out because i wanted to save money listen my friends were partying they were partying calling me let's go i'm like no i was i was working i was coming home collecting my money i was collecting my money because i knew it that one day will come that my whole life savings will have to go into the plane tickets the you know the plane tickets are when we're talking about years ago when the plane ticket would be equivalent of my mom's like four or five paychecks. So me, I had to collect, I had to make the money, right? So there was no other option. So I take someone else's sub, I go into the store. We were working on these promotions. You know how the promotions, I don't know where do they have or even ever they had. You go to the store and the girls uh, dress up nicely, representing different companies, maybe like a you know, some, we would have chocolates or other things and we would cut them and the customers comes and they try it and they buy it, right? You convince them to buy. I love that. I really love this job because it was so interactive and I always had awesome sales because I was not afraid to approach someone. I was not afraid, afraid to, like, I would not give up on them. I would like the sales because it was challenging. So I like to do that stuff. Because it challenges me and somebody says to me no and I have to say yes. <laughs> they have to say yes to me. You gotta say yes to me. You can't say no. Come on now. And I'm 20 years old. So the life is yours. <laughs> but anyway. So I meet this girl from my high school at the same promotion. But we are not friends. So we just talk. And I don't know what I tell her my story. Of course, when you have a big goal, you got to tell the story. I want to do this and this. You got to share publicly. You got to share to the world. You cannot hide it. So she goes to me, America. I go there every year. I said, what do you say? Oh, yeah, every year I go for vacation for three months. I said, wait a second, vacation? I said, how do you do that? She goes, I, I do babysitting. You know, I fly and I have a family. But she says to me, you know what? This year I cannot go. This year I cannot go. I got an offer from another family from the same time. So this family is looking for someone. Look how things happen. The girl we never talk in high school gives me the number to call this family. So like today, I remember, guys, the next day, we used to have these public phones hanging off of the walls in like public places. Did you guys have that? You know, the booths? Then you go go inside and you would put the money and you would call. I did not. There was no cell phones. Hello. We're talking about 25, 26 years ago. All right. So I go in the famous place in our city when a lot, a lot of the kids would hang out. There is no booth, but there are like lined up phone on one wall. And all the Polacks talking. And they scream. So I call freaking expensive phone call to America, 20, 30 different numbers to dial. I call this, this family. And remember, I am not speaking English. I am speaking, I'm, I'm speaking English, not American. Uh, so I, <laughs> I call them. These people pick up their phone and they start bobbling. And I'm like, oh my God, what did she, what did she just say? What did she just say? Because it's all idioms, it's all connected. You know, your brain cannot comprehend a second language that fast. So I'm asking her, excuse me, excuse me, slower, please, slower, slower. <laughs> She's like, how am I going to hire this girl? Because it was like an interview. She never met me. She is like an interview over the phone. 
and and I am like and oh by the way before that's what other thing happened before I even talked to them I left them a message I left them the phone number to call me I had to stay by the booth people wanted to grab the phone I'm like I'm waiting for a call in Pol Polish I'm like I'm waiting for a call you cannot take this booth I'm waiting for a call so these people call me I had to pick up the phone in public place I mean come on now so when I talk to them the call is has to be quick because I'm low I'm, I'm losing shit load of money I mean guys this was expensive shit it was, wasn't some you know a dollar this was so much money and I'm like it, it and that's what I was doing I was giving up I was not afraid to lose the money to get what I want I had to put on one car everything on one cart this is like you know like almost a like gambling you know gambling have you ever gone gambling you putting on on one thing and you're gonna lose it you're gonna lose it so she she goes um okay so we need you here and here i write down these dates she tells me that she's gonna pick me up from the airport on that date and i'm telling her that i'm gonna buy my plane ticket and i'm gonna call her one more time guys a plane ticket from my own money to family that i don't know that was only a family that know, knew this girl that was working for them three times they could have easily said to me well you know we changed our mind you lost the ticket it was it was such a thing for me i remember i bought the plane ticket i spent all my money back in the day you would not get any money back you bought a ticket too bad you gotta fly and i was thinking what if they're gonna tell like i started having you know thoughts like i bought this ticket i was praying god for them not to cancel just omg my grandmother has taken me to phone booths when i was younger yeah so so um my my kids are saying goodbye to me bye guys so you know I had that ticket and I called them one more time everything was arranged so they were coming to uh, New York to JFK to pick me up they did not know how I look like because back in the day you couldn't send a picture over the phone right there was a phone booth <laughs> there was no I had I, there was no email so I did not have no email you know I had a computer but you couldn't sent like a picture I did I could not connect my phone camera it was just a different world okay some of you were just born Eliana I think you were just born there <laughs> maybe you were not born yet <laughs> Chas was definitely not born so we are talking about crazy old times so imagine with that with that with that ticket I'm like on pins and needles I gotta fly to unknown place so guys, I given up everything that I had. I given up all my fear. I given up all my money. So what are you going to given up to get where you want to go? This is simple. You got write this down. What are you going to given up to get where you want to go? my family listen to this that was another thing i did not tell them i did not tell them all these months what i was doing and i missed one important fact which i'm gonna tell you just in just a second how, how on earth i missed that when i told them that i have a ticket and i'm leaving in a week they they went bizarre they went crazy and i knew it was gonna happen so i kind of protected myself I said I don't want anybody to discourage me from I have my plan on so I did not share my story I did not share because this is the thing again people love you but your family can be so overprotected that will stop you from achieving your goals my family and I'm gonna give you an example from what just happened the other day I call my grandparents I call my grandparents constantly hello Marlene I'm glad that you joined I called my grandparents I tell my grandma about Tyson's bike ride for 130 miles. This boy is nine year old. He did 130 miles, 122, I think exactly, because the, 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 there was a ride for 130. 
that her first thing was, oh my God, is he okay? How could you do this? I said, grandma, grandma. I said, let's not go there. I said, we all, it's all good. He's feeling great. It, it, immediately fear, immediately putting these little things into you. That's how I was raised, guys. Everything was scared, scarcity mindset, even though they love me so much and I love them dearly. But once you're going to see the picture, you can tell them whatever you want eventually, but you're going to know that their fear is not going to affect you. But you need to have that strength to build it. If you don't have it, I'm sorry, most likely you should not be sharing because your family can stop you. Your friends can stop you from achieving your goal. So I give up completely everything. The courage was there to do that. But let me tell you one important thing what I've done and I didn't really tell you. Some of you, maybe if you heard my stories before. When I was looking for who to contact, not how to do it, I found an organization I found an organization in Warsaw that was sending au pairs overseas, right? Now, this wasn't just an easy thing. I had to call them. I had to drive for the interview. Let me explain it to you. I don't have a car at that time. I had to take a public transportation, either a bus that takes three hours or four hours to get there, or I had to hop on a longest train, some not speedy train that takes 45 minutes now from Woods to Warsaw. It's an oldest train that takes four hours to get there. All right. I had to go there to meet them in person. They had to interview me twice. I had to create a book of pictures of me taking care of the kids. I had to, and you know what? I created a fake stories because I was no damn babysitter. I was no damn babysitter. I was 20 years old that wanted to come to America because I had a goal to make money. Because I want to change my life. Because I wanted to live the 90210 dream. Some of you might think, oh girl, you're, <laughs> what were you thinking? Like this is how low you think you just want to make money? That was my thing and I'm going to get to this. And I'm going to tell you this, that money is not, not going to make you happy. <laughs> I want to tell you all of this in a second. Just bear with me. That was my fault. I had a plan. I'm going to make the money. I'm going to come back. And I'm going to either invest or do something with my money that I can be more independent. Because I knew it that if I'm not going to break the chain of my family working so hard, just 9 to 5, and putting the pennies, and I'm not going to get anywhere. And they wanted me to have, they wanted me to work as a teacher at school. I'm like, no. It's great. I, I, this is my education. I could have been a teacher. I wanted something more for myself. It's okay to dream big. It's okay. But they want it so bad. And I start resisting. I love you more, but I don't want this. So I stop saying anything. I love them dearly. I would help them with anything. So when I was interviewed by this organization, they didn't take me. I created such a nice book of pictures. They, there were phone numbers. They called the people. The people were like, yeah, she was a babysitter. <laughs> well, you got to do what you got to do, right? And they didn't take me. Maybe they figured I was no babysitter. I felt so fake in this interview, guys, because deep inside I knew it that, you know, I had to do it just to get the job. They didn't send me. Now, imagine. This is a second failure. First was through my boyfriend that we broke up. Then was this organization. And you could think like, okay, so now she's going to give up. No, I felt, I felt more even uh, like kind of like, mm, I got to do this. They're not going to stop me. That was my thing. So I, I want you to feel, I want you to uh, understand that these obstacles will be thrown your way. They purposely done. I always say this. This is like these logs underneath your feet, these fires, this crazy chaotic thing is from for a reason for you to either. The universe is asking you, are you strong enough to conquer this? Are you weakling? Are you strong enough to push forward? Are you going to give it up like everybody else in this life? So what is going to be? Is she worth it? Is he worth it? 
to go forward because there will be more obstacles in their way if she's going to go to America. Guys, this is how it works. I'm telling you this. This is how it works. That's what the universe is asking you. So that was the second time, right? So the third time was this girl. And knowing how my failure worked, I'm like, I started questioning myself. I'm, now listen, I'm on a plane. I am on a plane flying to JFK. I given up my family. I given up my money. I have nothing left my country, decided that if I'm going to go for three months, I obviously I was at my university. I knew that I'm coming to finish my, uh, I had at that point one year to graduate, to get my master's degree in physical education. Uh, I'm sitting and I was like, I remember I was sitting next to some artist, some guy that was painting, coloring all nine hours. We were chatting. I don't know how I understood this man, maybe because I had too many drinks. I drank on that plane, guys. I drank. I drank. I had a couple of drinks. Because I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to arrive? I stopped worried. I'm going to a strange country with strange people. I don't know them. They have kids. How am I going to do this job? But you know what? I landed. They were there. They picked me up. And the whole thing just began. Nice family, two kids, one was eight years old, girl, 12 years old, and here we go again, a broken family, there is no father. There is a boyfriend, but there is no father. So, I don't, like right now when I look through this, my experience with them, I made a lot of mistakes with them. I couldn't connect with them. I couldn't, but I was also not resilient enough to take the jokes to, I was very, um, I would say I would take everything personally. And instead of building like trust and being united, it, it, it was start being like a weird connection built. So literally I could not understand how this girl that came before me could build such a strong connection. I was... I thought that I was trying, but now that I look into everything, what I did, I was just doing my job. I didn't want to get to know them. I didn't want to, I want to participate with them, but on my own terms. So on both ends, this whole journey ended, but I didn't want to leave the country. I extended my trip. I found a job and I was working with, uh, I was working in the restaurant at that time. I found a job. You could do this. So there are things that you can do. And I stayed longer. Oh, Eliana is actually sending. This is the Eva. <laughs> this is like move time for me. Can listen to this all day. Funny story, Eva. And I went to Arizona together and poor lady sitting next to ask us if we had a long time with, <laughs> I remember, yes, she, Eliana is, yeah, we didn't shut up, yes, that was me, but guys, I didn't connect to this family, I didn't, it, it, the, the, the whole thing fall apart, and let me tell you how it fall apart, the 12 year old came out with a big butcher knife at me, when I was talking to my Polish family, and I say, hell no, even the, the thing behind me fall off the wall. You see, I packed my bags. I was out. I'm like, this is it. I am not, I can't do this anymore. So I start working. I extended my trip. And I, I did inside of me, guys, I didn't want to give up. That was that deep, deep feeling that I, I if I give up, I felt like super failure. So I did everything. Now, listen to this. I come two months later. I fly back to Poland. And let me tell you, back in the day, you would get a tourist visa. Tourist visa is for tourists, not for work. So let's be straight not with that. Wow. So, um, I go back. I go back to my to my uh, to my university, and my professors say, "You cannot join." I said I was begging him. I said two months. I will pass by these 
these exams just let me please he did not give me the chance i felt so broken and i tell you why because that was my group of people that for four years we've been studying five years is in university to get master's degree i couldn't finish with my year they were my people here I think in United States is different. You join whatever classes you want. You hop from group to group. Maybe you don't get to know everybody. Over there was like a united thing. So what I did, I felt, well, there is no other way other than for me to go again. <laughs> so I buy the plane ticket and I fly again. And that was the journey that was happening every few months like this, right? So I will come and I will go. I will come and I would go. And then I've come and I stayed a whole year and I finished, I graduated my university. You know why? Because I knew it, that I need to finish this. Even though it was so deep inside of me that I felt like, oh, you know, I, I wanted to stay, but I knew it that I have to finish because how can you not, how can you lose four years? So there are things in your life that you need to finish guys. If you put so much effort into something you need to finish you can't just give it up so make the smart decisions there are things that you will give up but there are things that you need to finish so be honest about it because i would never give it up i wanted to have my master's degree okay i put too much effort into it so i graduated i got my master's degree i danced with my professor on the table we drank all night can you imagine the older professor like he was like 60 he hopped on the table there was just chaos all of us on the table dancing. That's what I remember from that party graduation. That was nuts. But I can go nuts. I, I, I am crazy like this, all right? I love good good talk. I love good laugh. I, go, I love good party. And I know where to stop and when to disconnect and when to say no to someone. When to say no to someone, right? Yes. So, here we are meeting meeting uh, Steve, right? I met Steve first at the, um, at the New York Sports Club, briefly, and then we met again. Like, I think a year or two, year, uh, two years later. And that's how our journey began. So when I met him, he was already training and I was studying to become a personal trainer group fitness coach because they wouldn't take my 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 legal papers they wouldn't take what I had because they said well this is nothing for us you need to study so let me tell you I study on my own reading magazines fitness magazines when I was working three jobs if I tell you that I work three jobs I will start at five I would finish at midnight I would work in the restaurants here, there. I would highlight the stuff, work with dictionary to learn the language, to learn everything about fitness. This was all self-study, but because I study Latin, it, for me, it was easier to study like books that had Latin. I, I geeked out on it and I loved it. That's how I learned. It was self-study because I was so obsessed about it that I wanted to do in life what I really was meant to do. So in the time, before we even opened up the gym, I went through so many jobs. And, and I, when I told you, when I came to America to make money, money will not make you happy. I was miserable because each time I would take a job, it wasn't fulfilling with my mission. So when you are not happy daily, if you start feeling that almost deep, deep disconnection and start feeling like you're feeling depressed, the job is not for you. You're not congruent with your mission. You need to find something that's going to bring you fulfillment and joy. So I knew it that making money, saving money is not, the, it's just, it's so empty. But I discovered this on my own. And that's when we opened up the gym and finally everything was just like, you know what? That was like a weight of my chest. That was a weight of my head. It was like, like I finally could breathe. Right? 
And we started, I was working in all these different gyms. I was working uh, another job to, to, uh, to save the money so we could open up the gym, right? But this is not the end. Let me tell you, the first few months for us, it was a struggle. When we first opened Spring Valley, we were great coaches, but not great business people. And that's when most people make the mistake. They think that they have an idea and maybe they are good with something, but they do not have a guidance on a mentor. Do you need someone that have done it and you can follow them? So you can be great at something, but you are not a business person. So we were lacking this. And eventually, till we actually understood and have a mentor and a coach, that's everything changed. So those are the things. And, and you have to go through the struggle. You have to go through the period of literally crying. You know, that's how difficult that was. I have to drink my water. I realized I haven't drank for a lot so long. So pregnancy comes. We were so new to having the business. I am pregnant. And, and the first thing, I'm not doing well. And the, as the pregnancy goes along with Tyson... I teach all the time, but I could, guys, the fingers are not enough how many times I wanted to give up. And each time I would give up and start all over and make me feel good because I felt so sick and, you know, the big belly. So it's like those things you go through your life. And now as I'm looking back, thank God that I didn't give up. Thank God that I continue because this gym, when I was going and training, even being pregnant and in pain and feeling disgusting and throwing up, it helped me to fully understand my mission because if I would have given up, I would have been miserable because I was miserable in the way the pregnancy was making me miserable. So I would stay at home being miserable. So it's a vicious cycle of being miserable. You know what I'm getting with this? So sometimes we need that internal push and you're going to get that. But what I told you before, like I write this down, your goal must be so big, so giant, I say ginormous, which is no word, that will exceed anything that your life can understand. That's what happened to me when I came to America, when I created the goal. You need to replace the how with the who you're going to contact, who you're going to connect, who you're going to connect with. What are you willing to sacrifice? There are sacrifices in our life. Look at me. I sacrificed my whole family. And for years, for years, I would feel guilty. For years, I felt that... Uh, guys, it took me 10 years. till actually, I think Tyson was born. It, it was always like... Hard in Poland, hard in America. It was always like really fighting with each other. It's very difficult combination, very like hard combination of things that you actually put in peace, understand it, and then you can move on. So what are you going to sacrifice in your life and be willing to do that? Your, your fear will be replaced with courage, but in order to overcome the fear, you got to go with it. Look what I did. I bought a plane ticket, gave up all my money. To come to a land that I don't know, to family that I don't know, strange country. Really, like, think about it. This is like a really insane story. And I'm sure that some of you can have insane story. Some of you have insane story. And I would love to hear from you that insane story. Start sharing. Share your insane story. Marlena, say, say either here or type it in the chat. Say your insane story. Because all of us have it. Once you're going to understand this, where you're coming from, where you want to go, you can have uh, fulfillment. So, fulfillment for me was always service. Nothing brought me happiness, so actually service. And worked, worked and trained till the last days of pregnancy, till people in a class said she's going to give birth to this child Tell her not to squat that low. This baby will pop out. I sat on the floor with private client one day. I couldn't get up. Steve was looking at me. Oh my God, how are we going to go about this? I couldn't roll. It was, the stomach was so big. So he goes to me. 
he comes to me, he said, you got a road so I can lift you up. This is a real story. I couldn't get up off the floor. The stomach was so gigantic. The client was looking at me. She was a good client of mine, so she was laughing. But he says, enough is enough. You can't do private training, you can do group training. So let me tell you how I overcome this. I would pick always the best person from the group and I would say, you're going to demonstrate the exercise if I couldn't do it. But if I could do the squat, I would squat. I couldn't do a squat thrust because, you know, Tyson is crazy as it is. Can you imagine me doing squat thrust with him? Like he would be even more crazy. So then the second pregnancy come, right? Ivanka. And that's totally different pregnancy already. More problems that I had. Was I training? Yes. Was I training myself? No, because I had a split open diastasis recti. She ripped me all apart. There was no abdominal wall left, just so you know. First pregnancy, C-section, Tyson, uh, Ivanka C-section. And after, uh, after Ivanka, I had a, they cut me from the sternum all the way down. Split open, there was nothing to repair. They sewed the muscle, put the mesh. Do I still train? Look at me. So I want to point this out to you girls. Life can be a surprise and you're going to get there. Don't give up. Being healthy and strong and, and committed. That's what you can do one day at a time. Don't think if you're pregnant or you just had a baby and you need to get that baby weight off and you had C-section, you're going to get there. Just one exercise at a time. One recovery at a time, one commitment at a time. The same thing with all of you who have any kind of goals related to fitness and to being healthy. Create a big picture, but do small steps. That's like, think about puzzle. When we get into a puzzle, puzzle has so many little pieces. You see the picture on the box, but... Create little pieces, piece by piece, creates the big picture, right? And that's how we got to do it. Step by step, little piece by little piece. And you're going to get there. So I hope you took some points from this. I hope this was enough for you to understand that crazy things happen in life. Life is so awesome for us to create fulfillment and joy First, you got to love what you do. You got to be so congruent with your mission. Uh, if somebody tells you no, don't take no for an answer. You got to dig deeper. You got to ask more questions. Ask yourself a question, why? And I tell you why. Why am I so persistent? Why am I so uh, committed? Why am I... Because... I will tell you, there are a few aspects, and I was asking myself this. It's like a seven layers deep. That's what it is. It's like we can go through this exercise one day, this like really deep asking questions. It's correlated how you were brought up, really the environment. My mom kind, my mom kind of given up on her life at some point, even though obviously she's very healthy and she lives her life. But she was always afraid about a lot of things and a lot of things she wanted to stop me with developing. And that's why I developed that inner thing of pushing, of pushing, even though something was not good for me. I wanted to fail on my own that somebody tells me no. That's how it was. So I developed that thing, that, 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 that being stubborn. I think Ivanka has that after me. But that's one thing. You know, uh, listening to your own self, creating the life for yourself. And another very important thing, which, what I would realize with her, it was she would plan something and she would change her mind. Like that inner, that second her, we call this a little bitch. All of us has it. You can call it whatever you want to call it. That's, I don't know, Diablo. <laughs> Hold on. Chess, coach, thank you so much for this. I was incredibly inspirational and such an opening eye moment for me. Thank you so much for staying, Eliana. Thank you. So my mom would, like, she would promise me something and then she would change 
her promise or she wanted me to change things or she would question me why I'm doing these things like and inside of me it developed that thing that I can change things so like almost things like okay I have a mission I have to do this I cannot give it up because I do that I'm doing what she's been doing it's kind of weird connection but because I see her what she has done I don't want to do the same even though I love her dearly I love her this, you know it's my mom uh, a lot of times it's like Steve will say no that's the no 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 you just let it go and I said yes I respect her I love her and I still do my own thing so wrap up yourself in a good bubble if people throw these negative things towards you stop it respect it move it towards your goal and don't change this thing so I was really dissecting it and looking into this like why why I'm going like this and it was always in me it's just I did not want to live that life you know so maybe you have this maybe you don't want to live that life and you see it in front of you and if you and but now is the thing either you're gonna change it because if you're gonna be sucked into this guess what uh, octopus has eight legs and they all gonna wrap around you and they're gonna pull you down so you cannot let that happen so take the lessons from today what I told you take them to consideration observe see it learn about yourself uh, you know um, I, I have so much learning to do. I have to be more patient. I have to listen. I have to be, uh, you know, more grateful. I have to, be, I am grateful for what I have, but that doesn't mean that I want less. I want more, right? So you deepen that core. Ask yourself deep and inside, like what, why you do things the way you do. If you're giving up on things easily, why is like that? Is it you or is it someone else? You know, and why you not, first of all, why you not healthy? Why are you not healthy? Why are you going through the cycles of losing and gaining the weight? It's always connected with something deeper in your psychological level. And you got to deep this, destroy it and become healthy for life. So if your goals last year, two years, three years, four years was to get in shape, do it. Stop talking about it. Just do it and stay there. Don't go ups and downs and go through mounts and valleys and they affect yo-yo. Once you get there, you get there. I told you my story, two C-sections, diastasis recti, crazy surgeries that I still can do flutter kicks, that I still can do, you know, squat thrust and lift the heavy weight. It's the answer is because I never given up. Yes, I was a coach. I'm a coach of over 20 years. But this has nothing to do because I was at one point in a worse physical condition than you are. So how come I got where I am and you cannot get there? You got to develop that thick skin, that conditioning, that push, that badass attitude that the no excuses ladies this network give you. I'm going to give you the ideas, but you need to go and do it. Nobody else going to do it for you. No one. I'm sorry to break it down for you. People can be supportive of you, but you are the one that going to stay on the stage, speak, call, resolve, write a book. Do whatever it is no one else it's just you so you, you gotta take charge you gotta take charge of your life because I see this too much I see this too much women given up and we have these tendencies because we take care of others and we going into the next thing taking care of others raising the kids and forgetting about your own good, forgetting that you can still look good no matter what age you are, you can still lose the weight, look better than ever. 
this all can be done. That's why we were talking about scheduling. Why? Two times I did a, a, a live about scheduling, developing the schedule. Look at this. Look at these notes. Do you think that this doesn't take time? Shitload of time. But that's what it takes when you take these notes and you become, uh, like, put it on the schedule and you have these block of times. You're going to do the workout daily and nobody's going to disturb you. Lock the door. Do something. Do it. Do it. 24 hours a day, each of us has. The successful, the unsuccessful, the overweight, the thin. 24 hours. How are you going to choose them? You know, it's so simple. People always say, women, oh, I have so many things to do. Okay, what things you have to do? Clean the kitchen? Wipe the floor? Awesome, wipe the floor, but put your workout first. Put your workout as your priority. Put what you want to do in life as your priority. Be the badass. You know how it look, feels good? Like, Eliana put this sticker right now with this. What is this? What kind of animal is this? It's that fox with a... A heart-shaped ass. Be the badass. It feels so good. It feels so good to be a badass. And when you, when you know inside of you that you like this, one day is going to give it to you the second day and you're going to feel awesome. Do I have questions? Do I have doubts? Do, do my days sometimes are not as fantastic as I want them to be? Hell yeah. Today I had a long thing. To accomplish, do I accomplish everything on the schedule? No. Do, but now I learned that as long as I accomplish the most important things, that's good. The other things will get done. Okay? It's impossible to accomplish everything on your schedule, let me tell you. Because the schedule is always getting busy and more things coming. And the things are coming. They are coming. I'm like, is this going to end today? No, but I stayed on the most important things. I took care of the clients. I contacted them. I messaged them. I speak to them. The rest I scheduled the next day. That's how I do it. And you can do it too. But you know what? Workout was done. First in the morning, you got to get up at five to do your workout. Do it. First thing in the morning, I think is the best girls. The best. That's how you conquer the world. You get up in the morning, you do your, your, your morning workout, and you feel like, whoo, now I can accomplish my day. Yes. And Chas, you still here? Oh, my God, this is awesome, guys. I'm on multi-social media. Zoom is recording. When we had our recent talk about putting my health first, you really opened my eyes, my mindset about getting that workout in. It's because of you. I know, get the motivation to make sure I'm going. Oh my God, this is like, thank you so much, Shas. You know what? When I got you on the phone, because I am so congruent with my mission, I feel like I cannot fail you. If you given up on me, you, 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 I'm losing you with you, your goal, because you have such a crazy big goal, and I need to get you there. And I look, you got to accept, you got to accept that there will be hard days. That's it. But keep on going forward. That's what I said. You got to accept. The acceptance is the key in the, I think, in, in overall greatness. It's an overall becoming successful. You accept certain things. They happen, but you go forward. That's it. That's it. And you're going to feel so much better. But, you know, better days, better days, better days, one thing at a time. That's it. So I hope you got some good notes from, from, from here. And I hope I was, uh, I am a little bit more closer to you with, uh, with what I wanted to share with my life. Uh, you know, there obviously it's, it's 44 years old of my existence. This is a lot of stuff, all of you. Like, so we could spend 44 years of talking, but combine certain things. If you want to ask me questions, certain deep uh, maybe dig more on a subject, 
send me a message. We can do a separate thing. We can do like deep, you know, digging into deep, deeper levels, uh, scheduling. We did that already. There will be other episodes that I can direct you and give you the thing. But remember, you creating your own destiny. You, you. People will come around your life and they will pull you a little bit to the side. They will steer this water that the waves will come your way and not intentionally. But if you have that clear vision, clear goal, so big that you already there, that's how you got to think. You got to think of these goals as present. So when I say this, it's not that I will lose the weight or I will become healthy. I will become ha like happy. I am. I am happy. I am successful. I am a badass. I am uh, I, 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 I am driven, driven with my life. I am because I will. It's like creating in your head like the future tense, not the current, not the, what is it called? Present tense. <laughs> Present tense. And another thing, look at me. I make so many mistakes with speaking English. Look at this. I speak ungrammatically. I create some weird shit words. People could not understand me in the sessions. They always say, Steve says that I'm the Russian. I am not. I speak Polish. Um, I make mistakes typing. I am blind, not not really. I I just have to um, wear the glasses so I can see stuff. Uh, nowadays, <laughs> I make mistakes. I have to. Uh, did this stop me from doing this? What I'm doing right now? Hell no, hell no. I just keep on going because I don't think that me speaking uh, another language is an obstacle. Find a person that speaks fluent second language, can read, can write, even though with mistakes. This is an achievement. That's how I see about this. My kids speak Polish. They speak Polish. I taught them. Do they read? Yes, they read. Evanka reads a little bit better because she puts more time into it. So look at this. It's like, think of these things. Don't think always an obstacle. Think that this is actually a good thing. Like... I know so many entrepreneurs and very successful people that have been dyslexic and, um, you know, they made a lot of mistakes. And I just take it. Maybe, maybe I will never be able to speak correctly. I speak with a big accent and people are ask me, hold on, what did I say? I just said something recently and, and the whole family is laughing. Tyson, Ivanka, Steve, everybody laughs. What mommy said? What did, and, and she goes and corrects me all the time. It's okay. I said, I correct you in Polish, you correct me on English. She said, this is how it is. I said, I don't speak. This is not my first language. This is not my first language. You got to be patient with me. My tongue doesn't go like this. These words. It's hard. That's why sometimes you hear me saying things the opposite way and it's not it just comes out i'm like whatever whatever it is what it is you like it or you don't i like it because i accept it i accept it it's okay you know i used to speak german i kind of have a hard time oh my god i just scrolled down 44 years old was talking. just to finish off just to tell you when I connected with my sister, right, from my first, from my father's first marriage, this was 10 years ago. We were at the same, the first time when I sent her a message on Facebook, she responded and I asked her, are you this person? Can we keep in touch? She didn't respond to me. I asked three weeks ago. She said, I'm sorry, I was in a hospital giving birth. We were pregnant at the same time, not knowing about it. Our children are three weeks apart. So I found her on Facebook. I contacted her. We got in touch. It's been 10 years of beautiful journey. 10 years of beautiful journey with my, with my sister, Anna. Then my sister found another sister, which we knew 
because I met her one time in my life, but my father given up the rights to her. So she no longer had the same list as I have, J-U-N-D-O, Yundo. So it was far, hard for us to find her. But my sister started doing certain things and we found her. And now we have a connection. The other sister was born, the last one was born in Germany. She speaks broken language, Polish. Now imagine, she speaks broken Polish. Thank God to her mom that told her Polish. Otherwise, we would never be able to communicate with each other. Because I just speak German very basic. I can read. I used to be so good, but unfortunately, you don't, you don't use it. You lose it. That's what Mr. Darwin said to us, right? You got to use. And I didn't, so I lost it. So now we communicate with the broken Polish. Does she care? No, because for her it's the most important thing to communicate with the sisters. And now it's three of us. Now, let me tell you one thing. None of us has been, have been accepted by the father. Now you can think how this impacted my life. It, of course it did. Now, you know, of course it did. It changes, I think, the whole perception of a man, of, uh, of uh, you want to have someone to always take care of you, like good feeling, and you don't have it, even I had the grandfather. And I see all of us searching always, there was that search for love, right, uh, in the relationships. And it affected us all, and I was saying this to them, that we have this in common. We we very passionate about things, We, but we understand it. And now once you understand it, you're like, okay, we grown women. You can change whatever happened in your life. He didn't accept us. It's okay. It's lost for him. It's lost for him. Uh, that's not a normal human being that leaves the children, right? And I am so open about this. And I hope one day this video will get to him uh, because... It just goes beyond and above of just a human nature to be like this, right? Affected us all, but we moved on. We found each other. Out of this whole crazy bad thing, one good thing happened. We all have each other now, right? We all have, it's, it's like so awesome. So he's going to die alone and we're going to stay together. He's going to die alone. Like imagine dying, not knowing that in the universe there are three girls out there that could have been by his bed when he's going to be dying. But they are not because he never wanted us there. For what and why? Who knows? Something probably from his childhood. Who knows what else in his head? It's on him, not on us. And once you get it, then you can move on. So anyway... I told you, this can be discussion for so long, but we got to wrap up. We got to meet here next week. And I want you to post something like this on the page. Let's make this page more alive. So we can help you with certain things. Post on no excuses. Maybe ask for a topic and let's move on. Guys, girls, ladies, gentlemen, thank you so much for participating. Thank you very much for, you know, being here and me babbling about this stuff. Because all of us, all of you have awesome life. You just have to tap into it. And, and I hope that my story gave you some connection, gave you something. Anyway, I will talk to you soon. I wish we could have a ability to take a picture of all of you here. That would be so awesome. My goal eventually is to have a picture of us doing the Zoom on this page, on this No Excuses, so we can see each other. That would be great. And, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for staying with me for so long. I hope this was good inspiration for you. We don't have the worst life. There is worse. Look, you look positive into the future. This future has so much for us to offer. You just need to take it and create the life for yourself. Anyway, no excuses, ladies. Thank you again. We will see each other next week. And remember, you getting this email, you can always rewatch it. You can rewatch it live. You can rewatch it on later on as a YouTube link because that's what's on YouTube. Talk to you soon, guys. Have a no excuses.